Some essay questions are straightforward. They might ask you to critically assess some claim or concept, or ask you a simple question which you'll have to answer in a complex way. Other questions aren't so simple. They'll make a statement and tell you to discuss it. They might ask you to compare and contrast two different ideas, or say which of two theories is the more accurate. I'm going to talk about both kinds of questions here. First, you're going to want to identify the key terms in the question. If the question is, what is the best solution to the demarcation problem, identify what you think the examiner means by the terms solution and demarcation problem. How are you going to define and operationalize those terms in your essay? This is essential because your argument has to have a clear definition of the terms you're using in order for it to be coherent and responsive. This doesn't mean you should use lazy constructions like, I am going to define demarcation problem as the question of how we can define science. That is a perfectly reasonable definition if you can defend it and you should give a reason you've chosen a certain definition but you need to be a little less clunky something like when we talk about the problem of demarcation we refer to the question of how exactly we can define science as a sphere of human activity which is somehow special will do just fine next question the question you'll hear this quite a lot and you'll probably wonder what on earth it means it's important to understand it because it can be the key to getting a high mark every term in a question is ambiguous Every question has hidden assumptions behind it. You can question these assumptions. For example, in the question about the demarcation problem above, there are assumptions that there is a single problem of demarcation, as well as a single best solution to that problem. Sometimes it's enough to point out that these assumptions exist, and then to proceed with the essay by clarifying the definitions you're using and the assumptions you're working with. Sometimes you might think that the assumptions are fundamentally mistaken, or disguise a more important question. In that case, you'll need to point this out, and then you'll need to proceed to explain why, and to make your arguments within the essay using your revised understanding of the question. Third, if the question is X statement, discuss, then you have, broadly, four options on how to answer it. Try not to hedge your bets. This isn't AS level critical thinking. You don't need to give both sides equal weighting and say, oh, it's a really tricky question and there are great arguments on both sides. Have opinions. So the four options for this kind of question are essentially one, this is true and that's great. Two, this is true and that's awful. Three, this isn't true and it should be true. Or four, this isn't true and that's fine. At the same time though, be careful not to be too vehement. If you make it sound as though there are no legitimate arguments for the other side of the question, you're unlikely to be engaging with the question as well as possible, and your markers are going to want to slap you upside the head for sounding too arrogant. There are a few questions that remain. How are you going to relate your argument to the existing literature? Who are the key authors you plan to draw on? Make sure you know their arguments reasonably well, and you've armed yourself with flexible quotes from their work. If you can, familiarise yourself with the people who think that they are wrong and silly. Figure out if there are arguments which are unresolved, and see if you can make a contribution towards resolving them. Once you've clarified all your terms, you could start to put your arguments together and write the essay. So to summarise, identify the key terms, define those terms, question the question.